Now, the global auto industry, of course, continues to look to Asia as a source of growth, and so too does the film industry. This year, the Asian box office is expected to grow more than 10 percent, with a 16 percent rise in the number of screens. Numbers like these have attracted more than 4,000 film and TV trade delegates from all over the world to the Asia TV Forum and Screen Singapore. And our next guest is, in fact, a star attendee as well. Here with us in studio is Golden Globe winning director Shekhar Kapoor, the man behind the Oscar winning film Elizabeth. Well, great to have you on board. Too bad that we didn't roll, we, di we don't actually have the actual red carpet for you on set, but it, it's, it's psychologically, it's all there. Um, what would you say is most prominent about the moving movie business right now, especially in particular to Asia, in light of the fact that this is where the growth is, and China and still, and, 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 and China and India are still uh, where the growth is happening. Let me explain it the best I can, as I do with the story. Um, I think when they make Spider-Man 6, and I've said this many years ago, okay. and it's become true, that when Spider-Man takes his mask off, 6, he's going to be Chinese. <laughs> and he's, okay. not going to be, uh, he's not going to be swinging in New York, he's going to be swinging in Shanghai. Oh. So effectively what's happening is, although we are globalizing, uh, so everything is becoming very close to each other, there is a cultural shift that will happen because of the rise of the consumer in China and India and the rest of Asia. And that will force films to be telling stories more from the point of view of Asia. Oh. So what you're seeing is not only the rise of business in Asia, you're seeing the rise of a culture in Asia. They're yeah. culturally Chinese getting more confident. Spider-Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Julia, jump in here. What do you say? <laughs> I think a Chinese Spider-Man sounds like an amazing idea. <laughs> it's I know, you know, difficult to get funding for these films, though, given given yeah, the trouble you know that we're seeing in, in, in the U.S. and in Europe. Um, whenever something changes, it's always difficult. You know, we're going through that phase where sh things are shifting, and in the shifting climate, those that are in power and those that are structurally at the head of the at the top of the game are very resistant to change. But this change, that what happens is the sand shifts between their feet, and before they realize it, it's gone. So this, that is the phase we are in. The global powers are shifting of entertainment and and cultural. Uh, if you like, cultural power is shifting. That's fundamentally what's happening. We love the idea of a Chinese or even an Indian Spider-Man, but let's, let's not forget, we've got censorship issues to deal with, and also, there's also a bit of a stigma as well. People still love, around the world, something that has the signature of a Hollywood uh, movie, of a movie house. So, that's why I'm saying that, that actually, this, the Chinese Spider-Man will be funded by Hollywood. Uh -huh. It'll be a co-production between China and the United States, but it'll be made primarily for the Chinese market because the Chinese market is the one that's expanding most right now. Um, and you can see this cultural shift. I mean, Life of Pi, if you look at it, I've been watching the way the American critics have responded to it and the American audiences have responded to it and the way the Chinese and Indian audiences and in fact European, Asian audiences. There's a, there's a fundamental difference in which they the Asian audiences have completely come out and embraced it because it's suddenly something that talks about their culture. Yeah. And uh, the Americans are still trying to get to grips with something that is not so linear, not so defined. There is a definition in the filmmaking and storytelling in the West. And in the East, we, we accept this whole idea of indefinitiveness and we look for patterns. So, yeah, I, I think that it'll be a combination. Hollywood is very strong, <laughs> and, and the marketing is very strong. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be a, a combination between them making films for China. And, You've and got experience of, of working in both Hollywood and Bollywood with blockbusters there. Do you actually envisage yourself making a similar thing in somewhere like China? Uh, I'm making a film called Pani, which means water, and it's about a future city. And I'm not saying where that future exists, where that future city exists, but it's a future city where it runs out of water and this, the, the city is divided between those that have water that live above the lower city, so I call it the upper city and the lower city. And the people who live above have all the water and they use water and thirst, I'm afraid, as a weapon now. So if the people in the lower city rebel, they just cut off the taps. So it's a metaphor for the rest of the world, but it's being made in India, it's funded in India, it's in English, it's an international kind of production, it's just funded in India. And we have stars, with, you know, they're American stars and Indian stars, and unfortunately no Chinese stars in this one, but maybe in the next one. So Asia is rising to make international films and funding international films themselves. So for me, this is a great move by India now from Indian funding and Indian productions.
Wow. So I'd be curious to see you produce a Chinese Spider-Man and maybe even a Chinese Bond. Bond, you know, maybe James Bond is maybe Ching Ching Bond or something. Oh yeah, but China has so many stories, you know. China has so many stories. The exploration of those stories, that's where the fascinating okay, lies. Well, thanks so much for that and good luck with your big debut tonight on the red carpet. I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Always good to have a bit of glitz and glamour in our studio. Check out Kapoor there.